coming back for this uh, third and last day of uh, this uh, on summer school. So for this first talk of the day, uh, third and last day of uh, this uh, on summer school. So for this first talk of the day, uh, we're happy to uh, have Chong Min Lee from ENS uh, of Lyon, but who is uh, probably in Korea right now, right? Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> so, you know, this famous ENS from Korea. Uh, who is uh, going to uh, do some nice script analysis uh, based on the Cooper Smith algorithm. So Chang Min, thank you for being here and you have something like one hour or however, whatever you want. Ah, yeah. Thank you for the introduction. So today I will talk about script analysis based on Cooper Smith algorithm. Okay, so as a basic notion, <coughs> sorry, uh, as a basic notion, I first define a lattice. Rectis is a discrete subgroup of independent factors. Here, the generated set is called basis. The, the number of basis factor is called rank. The concatenation of basis factor is called basis matrix. And any lattice point can be represented by P times V. Here, the V is the integer coefficient factor. So in this talk, we only carry the case n equals to m. In this case, the determinant of the lattice is defined as a determinant of the basis matrix. Okay, so lattice-based algorithm is characterized with finding a short lattice point. And it is a useful tool, useful tool to analyze some crypto systems. Normally, lattice-based crypto analysis can be interpreted into a construction of some lattice, some special lattice, which has a special short lattice point. In this talk, I provide how to use the lattice theory to solve equations. As an application, we, I also provide some quick analysis. Okay. So if we have some polynomials, then we can represent it as a factor in a couple of different ways. In a natural way, the polynomial is identified with a sequence of coefficient. And this representation has an additive work property. In other words, you can add two polynomials and constant multiplication. This kind of computation still output a degree n polynomial. So this vector corresponding correspond to a lattice point. In other words, the polynomials or polynomial vectors generate a lattice. Usually, algebraic problems such as finding a solution of equations has no geometric structure. But as far as you know, lattice is a geometric object. And so the lattice generated by polynomials are going to be providing a geometric view on algebraic objects. If you want to put the polynomials into a lattice, suddenly there is a geometric structure, and now we can try to exploit that somehow to find our solution. But you have to keep in mind that a geometric structure does not guarantee to find all solutions, whatever you want. It's only sure that a small solution can be recovered with the lattice reduction algorithm. Uh, in this talk, of course, I will state a lattice reduction algorithm, but I use it as a black box. Okay, so now we are going to move on to Copper Smith theorem, which is the main theorem of this talk. The theorem allows to find a small solution by using a lattice theory. So I will start with the theorem statement. So Copper Smith theorem says that given some degree n polynomial f and some integer modulus n, then we can efficiently find all of the small integer solutions modulus n. The small solutions satisfy something bound, i.e. the size of small, uh, the size of solutions is less than n to the 1 over n. Here I note that the integer modulus n can be a composite number. So why Copper Smith algorithm is interesting? Uh, 
normally to solve equations over composite modulus, we need a, a couple of steps. Factoring to primes, solving the equations over each prime modulus, and use the Chinese remainder theorem. Then which allows to get a solution modulus n. Here my point is that to get all solutions is as hard as factorization. But factorization is classically known to hard. So that's the reason why the couple Smith algorithm is interesting. If we accept the bound on solution side, we can find all small solutions without factorization. In crate analysis view, it will break RSA encryption scheme. Suppose we have a ciphertext C, here C is computed by m to the e modulus m. We already know the exponential number e. Here m is the message and we want to, we want to hide it. So to guarantee the script of RSA scheme, we believe that to recover any message m is hard in general without the size constraint. But thanks to the Copper Smith theorem with the polynomial fx, which is an x to the e minus c modulus n, then it can be broken if the message is less than n to the 1 over e. So it shows that RSA scheme could be insecure in, in, a, uh, in a geometric view. Okay, so. From now, I will try to go over the proof of Copper Smith theorem. So we will see how this works. We are gonna input uh, degree n polymer f and integer modulus n. Then we want to find all small solutions modulus n. This algorithm works by constructing the auxiliary polymer gx, so that any small solutions here is a root over the integers. That's the point. Instead of modulus n, we have uh, solutions over the integers. After obtaining the polynomial gx, we can just find its integer solutions with polynomial factorization. And I just, and, and really, uh, it is easy to find, easy to compute the polynomial factorization. Of course, it can be replaced with the other algorithm, for example, with the method. So anyway, we can, we can, we can, Polynomial factorize very easily. So anyway, I note that in this talk, we only focused on how to work the first step. How do we ensure the first step? I mean, in case we have a degree n polymer f and modulus n, how do we find the auxiliary polymer g, which has a small solution of f? The Key idea is to consider a set of polynomials which share a common which share common root modulus n. Obviously, f(x) x times f(x) x, uh, of x times f(x) share the same root with f of x. And trivially, n n times n x n times power of x also share the same root with f(x) in modulus n. So any linear summation of the polynomials of yes, so any linear summation of the polynomials share a common root as well. In other words, it satisfies an additive homomorphic property. So you can imagine that it can be connected with the lattice theory. So I note that we are going to try to construct auxiliary polynomial G from integer polynomial combinations of fx and so that the size of g of r is less than n. Here, r is the uh, uh, target solution of f. Since we already know that g of r is zero, is zero modulus n. So it implies that gr equals to zero over the integer. <coughs> so next question is that, how do we ensure the size of g of r is less than n? The size of g of r can be written as the summation of monomials. Thanks to cauchy schwarz inequality, it is less than the size of the monomial vector times the square root of t plus one. So for simplicity, 
let me denote the monomial vector as a vector g of r. So it implies that if the size of vector g of r is less than n over t squared to t plus 1, then we have the required conditions. So now our goal is to find the polynomial g from the linear polynomial, linear polynomial summation of fx and n, such that the size of vector g of r is bounded. To do that, let's consider an example of this. Here we only care about polynomials up to degree 3. Degree 3. So, and suppose that suppose the polynomial f is a degree 2 polynomial. Then only fr or r times fr has degree 3 polynomials. And we can take some powers of r times n. Then each polynomial can be identified with the vector to the right side one. And as I mentioned that it satisfies an additive homomorphic property. So in other words, it generates a lattice. That's the main point. Yeah, that's the main point. And we are ready to use the lattice theory and algorithm. So it is clear that the vector of G of R is a lattice point. Therefore, we can say that the we can say that the side of G of R is bounded means that we want to find the short factor in the lattice. Okay, so let me take a moment to okay, let me take a moment to explain how to find the short factor in the lattice. Let P be a basis matrix of a lattice L. And our goal is to find the basis of small size. The so finding a short factor algorithm can be split into two types, approximation algorithm and exact algorithm. As the name said, approximation algorithm allows to find a relatively short factor in a short runtime. It does not guarantee to find the shortest factor. LLL and PK algorithm are included, included in this part. Exact algorithm such as HKZ algorithm find the shortest factor in exponential time. So there is a, a trade-off between shortness and runtime. <coughs> so you can see the performance comparison table between the three algorithms. Why the HKZ algorithm has the smallest HF than the PK algorithm and the LLR algorithm has the worst HF. But the LL algorithm is the most fast. Then the PK algorithm and the HKZ algorithm is the slowest. Here HF stands for how many factors? It is defined as the ratio of the size of V and determinant of L to the 1 over M. Here V is the uh, shortest alpha factor of the algorithm. So Small HF means that the algorithm output a factor short enough. Uh, here I note that the PK algorithm has another input beta. The quality of the, the quality and time of runtime of PK algorithm depends on the beta. Especially if beta equals to the rank of lattice n, then it plays a role of HKZ algorithm. And if beta equals to 2, then it plays the role of LLL algorithm. Okay, so come back to step one again. Since we don't know the solution R, you, prob you probably don't know how to operate the step one. To explain that, we replace it with a variable M. In generic, we can generate a, we can generate a bigger lattice with a higher degree D polynomial instead of degree C. And as I mentioned before, we want to find the short factor in the lattice. If we use an LLL algorithm, we want to, we want to obtain a polynomial G satisfying the following condition. Yes, the side of G, the vector of G of R is bounded n over Q to T plus one. With an optimization computation, this condition is reduced, reduced 
to m is less than n could be 1 over n with a proper degree d. Yeah, so in the first step one, we can replace the variable m with, with the, in, the number n to be 1 over n. Okay, so let's go back to the previous page. So now we know all vectors. So if we use L, if we use the LLR algorithm on the lattice, then the corresponding out vector g of m is bounded. Even more, if the side of r is less than n, the polynomial also satisfy the desired condition from the relation. g of r is less than g of n. So we are done. Yes, we are done. So in step one, what you have to do is just to construct a lattice of proper degree d and use an LL algorithm. Yes, that's true. Then we can have the desired result. Okay, so uh, as an improvement of Copper Smith algorithm, you can consider to use another lattice algorithm, such as the PK algorithm and or HKZ algorithm. That's a good point. But unfortunately or magically, the exponential approximation factor of a LL algorithm turns into a constant factor loss in the size of the root. So a LL algorithm is already useful enough. So, and as a next topic, we consider two questions. So the one is that in case we know a multiple, multiple of n instead of, of n, is the algorithm still available? The other one is that the algorithm is extendable to the multivariate polymer cases. So from now, let's see the topic by topic. Okay, so now we are going to move on to the first variant of Copper Smith theorem. The first variant of Copper Smith theorem says that given some polynomial f of degree n and some integer models n, here the integer n is the uh, integer of p times q, then we can, we can efficiently find all of the small integer solutions modulus p. Defining a beta equals to log n of p, the small solutions satisfy something bound. And I mean the size of r is less than n to the beta square over n. Compared to the original, original theorem, we want to find the solution of f modulus p instead of given integer n. So there is a, a difference. Okay, so let me try to go over the proof of variant of Copper Smith theorem. The proof, the proof is exactly the same to the original one, except for the conditions. We know that the modulus n and polynomial f has a root, has a root r modulus p. So, so its linear summation also has the same root. In the original world, we want to find the polynomial g such that the side of g of r is bounded by n. But in this case, it must be bounded by p. So, and p is a factor of n. Yes, so, so we need to find the more sure factor. So, from the region, the recessory condition gets complicated. So, except for it, the whole theorem is, the whole proof is exactly the same. Okay, so let's jump into the application. Breaking RSA with known bits. Before we jump in, I describe a RSA crypto system in another cell. The public information is a composite integer n and e. Secret information is a factor of n and d satisfying the condition, these conditions. Then encryption of n is defined as m to the e. The decryption of C is defined as C to the D. So I will, I will explain how to break the RSA scheme with a Copper Smith algorithm. 
let's say assume that given the most significant half bit of uh, factor p, our goal is to factorize an RSA modulus n. So now we define fx via an equation x plus a, where a is the most significant half bit of p, and r equals to p minus a. So the r is the small solution of fx modulus p. By the setup, p has an approximately size of n to the 1 over 2. And the size of r is less than n to the 1 over 4. Apply the previous, by applying the previous theorem with n equals to 1 and beta equals to half, we can find the desired solution efficiently. Yes, please. Now let's consider the second variant of variant of Carpenter algorithm. It is for multivariate polynomial cases. This Carpenter theorem says that given some degree n multivariate polynomial f and some integer modulus, integer modulus n, then you can find all of the small integer solution vectors modulus n. The small solution vector satisfies something bound. I mean, the product of the small entry must be bounded by the entity 1 over n. Here I note that this theorem has an exponential time complexity in the number, number of variables. Okay, so let me try again to go over the proof. Here, there is an issue for step two. When we have a multivariate, multivariate preliminary G, there is no way, there is no way to recover the small solution. Uh, yes, there is no way to factorize the G. So we have to detour to get the desired bigger. So we consider other steps. Instead of obtaining one polynomial G, we will obtain several polynomials G, the M polynomials. The m is the number of variables. These polynomials are constructed from the m short factors in the lattice. Okay. <coughs> so each, each short factor generates uh, one polynomial. Next, we compute the uh, univariate, pol univariate polynomial capital G of x1 by applying a resultant algorithm to the set of polynomial Gr. Briefly speaking, the resultant algorithm is a, is a step for reducing the number of variables. Then now we can factorize the capital G of X1 to recover the solution R1. Here I note that we encounter algebra independent, algebra independence issues, but unfortunately, there is no clever way to guarantee it. So I mean, this theorem is normally touristic. Okay, so let's jump into the second application, breaking RSA crypto system with small secret key. Let E and D be a public and secret key of RSA crypto system, respectively. From the RSA structure, we have E times D, E times D equals to one, modulus P minus one times P minus one. So it can be written as one plus C times P minus one times P minus one for some integer C. Here we don't know the red color letters, why the black one is public. Yeah, so we will, we will consider a, a polynomial. For simplicity, let S be, an, S be an integer C times C plus Q, and we define a bivariate polynomial fx comma y as E times x plus one minus one. Then this polynomial has a small solution E comma S modulus n plus one. We know the side bound, we know the side bound of C and S like this. C is bounded by D and S is bounded by D times Q to N. By applying the Kappa Smith theorem with N equals to one, we can heuristically find, we can heuristically find D 
it, it is less than n to the 1 over 4. So my point, my point is that to break a, a RSA crypto system is normally considered as an algebraic object, algebraic tool. But it can be broken in the geometric tool, geometric field. So I guess, I guess it is an amazing, amazing result. Okay, so far I explained the kind of introduction of copper smith algorithm. So now we are gonna move on to my recent work. Here there is the third variant of copper smith algorithm. It is the combination of the previous two variant cases. This copper smith theorem says that given a linear multivariate polynomial f and some integer borders n, here a, n is a p times q. Then we can find all of the small integer solutions, small integer vector solutions, modulus t. By defining beta equals to log n of p, the small solutions satisfy the something bound. Here I note that the proof of our line is the combination of the two previous cases. So, and the other, the second note is that if we obtain the solution, we can recover P by computing the GCD of N and F of R. Okay. So, next, let me start by introducing one problem. Here, AI is a multiple on prime, multiple of prime p. Problem is that from the integers, uh, from the integers AI, the multiple p, can you recover a script prime p? It is clearly easy by using a Euclidean algorithm. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it is easy. So now, I will tweak this problem. I will add some small integer ri to a multiple p. Then each integer ai is of the form pqi plus ri. So it is congruent to ri in modulus p. Here I note that the size of ri is much, much smaller than p. So we call it, I call it approximate multiple, approximate multiple of p. So HD problem is that from the integers of approximate vertical p, can you recover the secret integer p? Yeah. From now, HD is our target problem. Interestingly, there is a reduction from LW to HD problem. And the LW problem is the main hot problem of lattice based cryptography. So if we can solve the if we can solve the HD problem efficiently, it would be a big impact. Here, there is a brief list of analysis of ACD. There are three types of lattice-based algorithms for solving ACD. Simultaneous view quantum approximation, orthogonal piece of text, and multivariate polynomial code. Uh, except, except for the lattice-based attack as a natural way, as a natural way, natural way to solve the ACD problem, we can try an exhaustive search on the Lloyd RI. Two sort of text, two types of parameter setup is recommended, BGHV type and CS type. Uh, in order to affect LW problem, we need to analyze the ACD problem with CS parameter setup. Uh, but probably CS parameter setup looks easier than that of DGHV, but it is not true. As far as you know, any integer can be represented by P times Q plus R for some integer Q and R. It implies that the size of R is as large as, as, large as P, the integer ACD integers get close to a random number. That is, that is the hardness of the ACD problem becomes more difficult when the ratio of 
log r over log t is get larger. Yeah, so from this perspective, the CS type is, is a more difficult parameter set up. Okay, so to simplify the problem, we add an immediate vertical of p. The pH problem is that from the integers of an one exact multiple of, multiple of p a0 and several approximate multiples of p a r. Can you recover exact p? Of course, for the pH problem, there is no reduction from LW to pH problem. Okay. Let's take a how to solve a case problem with copper smith algorithm. In order to use a copper smith algorithm, we first need to make a polynomial f, which has a small root. Here, there is a naive way to make to make such a polynomial. Suppose two case p a c samples a one and a two are given. Consider two polynomials f one and f two is with is defined as f one x comma y is defined as the a one minus x and f two x comma y is defined as a two minus y. Then two polynomials have a common root r one comma r two modulus p. Yeah, so we are ready to apply the Kaposnikov algorithm. But uh, it is clear that but if the size of beta square is small, the Kappa Smith approach is infeasible. And for the correct parameter setup, it is not available for the live way, for the live approach. So we need another way to generate a polynomial. So this, the, the, my approach is that the composite integer n has two factors with p and q0. The p is, is much smaller than n means that q0 is much larger than uh, sorry. The q0 is much larger than p means that uh, sorry, q0 is much larger than p. So instead of p, we want to make a polynomial model of q0. Then beta square get r. So we have two issues. How to obtain a polynomial? How to make a polynomial which has a non-zero solution with Q0? The second issue is that how to guarantee that the solution is small? Okay, so let's go back to the matrix. I ask you, basis matrix is unique? Yeah, the answer is no. For any unimodal matrix U, B times U, BU is also a basis matrix. By the setup, U inverse is also an integer matrix, and any matrix point can be represented by BU times U inverse times B. And determinant of lattice is still very defined because the determinant of U is 1. Okay, so let's see the first issue. How to obtain, how to make a polynomial? which has a non-zero solution for those Q0. Consider our column that is L generated by two by two matrix D. One, zero, A1, N. Here A1 is the PhD sample. Then L has the lattice point Q0, comma, R on Q0. And this vector is, zero, is a zero vector in modulus Q0. So for any unimodular matrix U, it implies that Q0, R on Q0 can be replaced by DU and U inverse and Q0, minus Q1. Here we know, here I note that the last vector is not a zero vector, is not a zero vector modulus Q0. And for simplicity, let the matrix DU be a two by two matrix of the form T0, C1, C2, C3. And the last vector is a uh, uh, two-dimensional vector t0 comma t1. 
So now define the polynomial f u x comma y as c zero x plus c one y. Then the polynomial f u has the solution c zero comma c one over c q zero in modulus q zero. So we are done. We make the polynomial f which has the non-zero solution over over c q zero from the matrix B. Even more we even more to, depending on depending on universal matrix, we can make a several polynomial. So now let's handle the second issue. How to guarantee that the solution is small? How to guarantee that 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 the polynomial uh, polynomial f has a small solution? From the design, we have the vector t zero comma t one equals to BU inverse times the vector Q0, R1, Q0. Here, BU inverse is comp computed by a joint matrix of BU over determinant of BU. And determinant of BU equals to determinant of B. So the size of target factor is bounded by three factors a joint matrix and Q0, R1, Q0, and determinant of B. But the size of Q0 and R1, Q0 and the determinant of B is fixed. So the size of target factor only depends on the depends on that of adjoint, adjoint matrix of BU. And the, so if so the real system, if we find the short basis of BU, the size of the uh, sorry. If we find the short basis of BU, it implies that the size of, of adjoint matrix is bounded. So the size of so as a result, the size of the solution is also bounded. Okay, so to estimate the size of adjoint matrix, we assume the Gaussian heuristic. Gaussian heuristics predict the length of the length of shortest longer independent factors in a rank n matrix. The lambda i of L is approximately determinant of L to the one, sorry, determinant of L to the one over n. Intuitively, the lambda i of L is the length of i shortest factor. And according to the Gaussian heuristic and the other joint matrix is computed by a cofactor extension. So we can estimate the bound bound we can make, we can estimate the bound of target factor. Okay, so instead of rank two, so in general we, we can consider a basis matrix of rank n. Here the size of n is set as O log lambda. Here and the log lambda is a security parameter. Then for the vector v, the lattice point p times v is the zero vector modulus q zero. Because the size of lattice is small, if we use the uh, HKJ algorithm, I mean the exact algorithm, exact lattice loss algorithm, we can find the good quality basis BU in polynomial time in polynomial time in lambda. Okay, so. The whole algorithm is to use the uh, HKJ algorithm on the lattice B. With the same argument, we can estimate the size of target solution. The determinant L to the N over N plus one comes, comes from the adjoint matrix. And the N to the N comes from the determinant of B. So the target factor, the size of target factor is bounded by R on Q0 over N to the N over N to the N over N of N plus one. The brief year, the brief year is that for GHGV parameter setup, the polynomial F satisfies the Kappa Smith conditions, the third variant of Kappa Smith condition asymptotically. So why the naive way does naive approach does not hold the Kappa Smith condition? So we can so we are ready to apply the Kappa Smith algorithm. Okay, so we did implement implementation for some cases. As I said, our estimation is computed under the Gaussian heuristic. So 
So we checked, we checked that the real size of solutions for several cases. Several cases. The first column is the size of the estimation of the, under the Gaussian Euclid. And the fifth column is the real size. You can see that they look so similar. So we can say that the Gaussian heuristic assumption holds properly. Yeah, this page is for summary. Briefly speaking, we present a reduction from this to solving a multivariate polynomial, multivariate polynomial problem. Combined with the previous algorithm, we can solve the PhD problem for DH parameter theta. So it does not affect the LW problem, unfortunately. Or, yeah, or, or fortunately, you, it will be a chance for you. I guess it would be an interesting problem to extend several parameter conditions, such as CS parameter set. Okay, so, okay, so thank you for your attention.